Oh my goodness, it's 2023, what the hell? Another new year and with that comes the release of another Home Assistant cycle and of course another new update which is 2023.1. This release is a smaller one as the development team and community enjoys a well-earned holiday and break but there is still some good stuff to check out including some matter updates calendar improvements and aliases for voice assistants. Do you want to know the real reason why I'm actually excited for this release? It's because for the last year of making these videos, every time I see a list of the videos I've made for the past year, it looks really nice because they're all in order, but because there was no January release last year, it makes the list look really weird because it doesn't start at point one, it starts at point two and it's all out of order. And now that is finally about to change this year because there is a January release. So now my list is going to be looking perfectly in order once again. It's the little things, you know? Aliases for voice assistants is in this release. And what this does is essentially allow you to add multiple names or aliases for a device. This is useful, for example, if you have devices that you sometimes refer to as a different name when you are speaking to your voice assistant. So for example, when I turn on the overhead light in the living room, it's called the main light, or as we like to call it in Scotland, the big light. Genius, right? But basically, if you have a device that you refer to as multiple names, or even if you are a multi-language household, then this will allow you to add aliases that will be reflected when using your voice with Google Home. I don't think this is currently a thing that Amazon uses, but they do say that it will be used in the upcoming Home Assistant Voice Assistant 2, so that will be good. Next up, we have some calendar updates. So last release in December, we got the introduction of the local calendar, which allowed us to have a fully fledged, totally local calendar directly in Home Assistant without any third party services and was one of my favourite features of the year. Well this release adds a couple of new features. Firstly there have been some new monthly reoccurrence rules added that allow you to do things like repeat on the same date of each month or do things like the second Saturday of each month or the last Sunday of each month for example. The local calendar also now supports managing and editing Google Calendar integrations through it too, which might be useful if you have multiple calendars. Maybe for work events, you have Google Calendar and for everything else, you use the local calendar. So now the local calendar integration will allow you to edit those events from Google Calendar. I think it's a calendar about 400 times there. Matter also gets an update this month too, as expected. So last month we saw the very first release of the Matter integration, which was basically a developer preview or alpha. This month gives us the ability to pair a Matter device using the Home Assistant Companion app on Android. Now, I haven't been able to test this yet because I've been way behind with all of my devices and getting a compatible Matter device, but if you have a compatible Matter device or when they are released or when they are updated, you should be able to pair that device with Home Assistant using the Android app to get the Matter integration. Finally, there were small improvements to the automation editor in that it should be able to provide even more choices in the drop-down box for the attributes and states when choosing a device, which should help build automations even easier. As for the little things in this release, firstly, SwitchBot now has support for three new devices, including the new SwitchBot lock, which I reviewed a while back and said that the only thing missing was Home Assistant support. So really great to see this added. And we also have support for new device classes for sensors, including data size, data rate, irradiance, sound pressure, and atmospheric pressure, which should be useful. And then finally, the Ecobee Smart Enhanced Thermostats now are supported by Home Assistant 2. As for new integrations this month, we have four new integrations in total, including the new Google Assistant SDK, which is a very interesting one and would allow you to control devices supported by Google Assistant in Home Assistant rather than the other way around. Neat. As for breaking changes this month, it is a short list this month with nothing major that I can see, which is great, but just to make sure to have a double check for yourself to make sure there is nothing that applies to you. That's it for Home Assistant 2023.1. Again, a smaller release this January, but still some good things to enjoy. Let me know your favorite thing down in the comments. Mine is probably the SwitchBot lock 
or the addition of the Google Assistant SDK. We'll certainly be giving that a test as it's a question I get asked all the time if it's possible to do so, so that will be interesting. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video. Aliases for voice assistants. <laughs> as for new integrations with my. As for new integrations with my. As for, as for new integrations with. What is happening? As for new integrations this month, we have. As for new integrations this month, we have four new integrations in total, including the new Google Assistant SDK, which is a very interesting. In, Fucking... <clears throat>